Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Worship Online. It's a pleasure to have everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mark Anthony Caban, and I'm a pastor in training here at FBC. And I am truly blessed to have another wonderful opportunity to share God's holy world with, word with you tonight. So the title of our message today is Patience Learned from the Past. And we are going to be reading from James chapter 5, verse 7 through 12. So whether it's your Bible or your phone, tablets, laptop, whatever you may have, please turn your Bibles to James chapter 5, verse 7 through 12. And the main topic today is going to be about patience. Patience, suffering, endurance. Now, before we dive into our message, let's talk about patience and what does it mean? Let me give you the definition of patience. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Let me repeat that. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. <laughs> now that's deep. We tend to do the opposite of that sometimes though, right? I mean, we get upset quickly. I mean, whether we're driving on the freeway or on the road, waiting for a light, uh, you know, somebody cuts us off, we're in a rush somewhere, we're waiting in line at the grocery store, or whether we're, whether we're dealing with a family member or a friend, we tend to get impatient quickly. Now, only if half of the world, if not most of the world, actually practice or applied patience to this life, to their lives. <laughs> Imagine how better this world would be if everybody applied and practiced patience in their lives. Because look around today, whether you watch the news or you're on social media, I can guarantee a lot of us, as we go through these experiences, we're seeing a lot of turmoil, a lot of tragedies, a lot of tribulations. And it's sad. It's sad that we're seeing that every single day. Or sometimes we're living in it, or our family members are going through it. Sad. But the Bible and Jesus warns us about these things. It's in the Bible, guys. Prep yourselves. John chapter 16, verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that you may have peace in me. In this world, you will have trouble. It tells you, you're going to have trouble. But take heart. I have overcame the world. See, Jesus overcame the world. And so can we. Because he's within us. Sometimes we just block him out or ignore him. Most of the time, people do that. And we're blinded. We have this veil over us. We call it the blindfold of life. <laughs> and we need to pray for that blindfold of life to be lifted off of ourselves and others. We need to pray for taking heart, being of good joy through these struggling times, through this tribulation. And we need to pray to have patience through these times. Matter of fact, let's pray right now. Bow your heads with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, please help us to lift the veils off of us, Father, so we can see life for what it really is. Father, help us to fix our eyes on you. Put you in the center of our focus every day. Father, I ask you, please, Lord, right now, as we receive your message, Lord, as we hear your message, actually, please soften the hearts of everybody tonight listening online. I ask you to open their ears and open their minds to receive your message and to understand your message. 
Father, thank you so much for your holy word and for giving us the ability to preach it and to hear it. What a blessing. Father, thank you for all that you do for us. We are truly blessed. And all glory goes to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo, that felt good. (laughs) Now, we're reading from James chapter 5, verse 7 to 12. And I'm going to be reading the verses. I'm going to read the passage really quickly. And then I will go back to the top and dissect verse by verse so we can get a better understanding. So if you'd like to follow along, I'm going to start at the top of 7. It says, Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. Verse 8 says, You too, be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Verse 9 Do not complain, brethren, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Verse 10, as an example, brethren, of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. In verse 11, we count those blessed who endure. You have heard of the endurance of Job and have, heard, and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. In verse 12, but above all, brethren, above all, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or any other oath, but your yes is to be yes and your no, no, so that you may not fall under judgment. So let's kind of get a better understanding of this, and I'm going to break it down verse by verse. So if you would like to start off at the top of seven, it says, therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. The farmer waits for the precious produce of the soil, being patient about it until it gets the early and late rains. So just like the farmer, we have to wait patiently as well for the Lord and for anything else in life. By us stressing or rushing is not going to get us that blessing any faster. If anything, it's going to delay it. So so do we have to have that same kind of patience as farmers. Let me share a quick story with you guys. So... About a year ago, I was just tired of the nine to five. And there's nothing wrong with the nine to five at all. But I wanted financial freedom. I mean, I think we all want financial freedom, right? (laughs) But I wanted financial freedom. I wanted financial excess. So I was doing everything in my power to try to reach that goal. Whether it's starting a business, investments, creating partnerships, whatever I can do to try to get financially success. I didn't want to be famous. I just wanted to have financial freedom. And I I just got very overwhelmed with with the work I was doing. I got burned out. And the Holy Spirit uh, spoke to me and said, hey, Mark Anthony, relax, chill out, and pray. So I prayed, and the Lord answered my prayer when I was waiting patiently for him. (laughs) And he told me, he said, be patient, my son, for your time will come. That's what he told me. He said, be patient. So when he told me that, I dropped everything. I said, you know what? I'm going to drop everything. I'm going to give it all to God. I'm going to rely on God and fix my eyes on him, not of the world. And because of my patience, because I dropped everything and just put him first, I mean, I've been receiving blessings left and right now. Now, I'm not financially successful or have financial freedom, but he's been blessing me. He, he allowed these closed doors 
because he has other ones opened for me. So it, it was just a blessing that he, that, that he showed me to wait patiently. And because of that patience, now there's blessings and now there's ideas that are coming from him that I can actually pursue in the future. And I'm so glad that I, wait, that I waited as well. And, and that's why people's prayers don't get answered so quickly. Some people expect God to answer them like that, like right now. But that's not the way God works. You have to be patient. You know what I tell all my brothers and sisters? When I, when I speak to them about Christ or whether they're going through something or they're having a hard time, you know, you ask them, hey, how's it going? Uh, you know, this and that. I tell them, I say, listen, repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Pray to the Lord. Ask him to help you out. Whatever you're going through, ask him to take control of your life. Tell him to take the wheel of your life. Then have faith. Just know that he's going to answer your prayers. Then have patience. Patiently wait for his answer or for his blessings. And then be obedient. Be obedient in his word. Be obedient to others. Show love. Then your prayers will get answered. And it, it was just, it's just amazing how this is all lining up with what I've been going through my last couple years. Let's go to verse 8. It says, you too, be patient. Strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. So we need to strengthen our hearts and our minds. We have to. Psalms chapter 27 verse 14 says, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. We have to. We can't rush things. It's not our timing. It's God's. Just like Al-Fadi uh, this morning, God's timing is always perfect. Don't rush it. And guys, Jesus is coming very soon, and he could come at any moment. Like I said, he's here. The, Lord, the Lord's coming is near. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2 says, For you know quite well the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. We don't know when he's coming. Just be patient. He's coming very soon. I know this life is hard. I know the struggle is real. But Jesus is coming soon. So just wait patiently. And equip yourself in the word. Saturate yourself in the word. Stay in the gospel. Spread the gospel. There's a saying that we always say, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Because we don't know when Jesus is coming. But if we're ready, yes, we're ready, you know. So verse 9 says, Do not complain, brethren, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. Now, I'm sure we all have done this a couple times in our lives, right? <laughs> and, and that's why we need to give it up and give it to our ultimate judge. Listen, guys. Gossiping is evil. Gossiping is evil. Why would you want to talk bad about your brothers or your sisters? Instead, we should be lifting them up. Like I said, we should be help, praying to lift the veil off. They're not the way they are because God created them that way. No, they're the way they are because of the world. So we need to pray for those veils to be lifted up so they don't have to be that way. We need to be praying for them to be lifted up. We need to pour our love Upon them, we got to be praying for them. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 through 2 says, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. You got to give respect to get respect. You heard about that. You, you, you got to treat others as you want to be treated yourselves. That's why Jesus said his word, love others as you love thyself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So instead of judging, instead of complaining about one another, instead of gossiping, instead, 
And this is actually from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. It says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Forgive each other, guys. Love each other. If you accept Christ in your life, you bring Christ into your life, you're going to feel differently. You're going to see differently. Guarantee. Verse 10, it says, As an example, brethren, of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. So these prophets, we have to learn from these prophets. We have to learn from them. We have to learn how to endure suffering and how to have patience. They've done it. They've been through it. We can learn from them. They're prime examples of it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32 through 38 says, How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the, uh, uh, the, of the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God has promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. They quenched the flames of fire. And ex they escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned into strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back again from death, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to set, be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. So this is what the prophets had to go through. They had to stay strong and have patience. They had to go through all these tribulations just like we're going through today. And they had to stay strong in patience. So so can we be strong and have patience through these hard times today. Verse 11 says, We count those blessed who endure. You have heard of the endurance of Job and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings. That the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. So take the story of Job as an example of the blessed who endure and how the Lord is always full of mercy and compassion. James chapter 1 verse 12 says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Just imagine that. Imagine going to heaven and God's presenting you with the crown of life because you endured the testing and the temptations, because you waited patiently through the struggle. Whew. I mean, yes, I would love to be presented with the crown of life. I'm sure you would too. And, and you know, Job is a prime example of enduring suffering and having patience. If you just read the book of Job, whether you're a believer or a non-believer, read the book of Job. You can learn from him. You can learn how to endure the suffering and have patience. And just a quick snap of Job. I mean, Job had everything. This guy was rich and humble at the same time. And he got every single thing taken away from him, which was a test, by the way. And yes, he was down. Yes, he was, he was sad. He cursed himself. He was mad at everything. But you know what? He knew that the Lord was full of mercy and compassion. So he waited patiently, and he stayed strong. And because of his patience, and, and, and endur endurance, God blessed them with everything back in double and more. Pass the test. Hey, pass the test, guys. Maybe God is testing you. Maybe you're going through a struggle right now. Maybe you get, you, you get put in certain situations that you need to have patience in. 
Maybe it's a test from God. You need to pass that test. And verse 12 says, but above all, my brethren, above all, above all of this, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but your yes is to be yes and your no, no, so that you may not fall under judgment. Guys, be patient before you answer or react to any situation. Really think things through. Be patient. Something comes up, take a deep breath, step back. What would Jesus do? <laughs> like my last time I said that, what would Jesus do? Same thing. What would Jesus do in a situation like this? Okay, Jesus would be patient. He would, he would share love. He would spread love in the situation. But most of all, Never swear to God. Never. You hear this all the time these days, like it's normal. Never swear to God. These people don't know that that's actually sinful to swear to God. And let me tell you something. If you do swear to God, you better mean it. <laughs> you better mean it so you don't fall under the judgment. Never swear to God unless you actually mean it. Because you will have to answer to the Lord. Guarantee you. Be careful what you say, because you will reap what you sow. James chapter 1, 19 says, Understand this, my brethren, my dear brethren and sister. Understand this, my dear brother and sister. You must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. It sells you right there. Listen, quick, listen. Be slow to speak. Step back. Be slow to anger. Is it really worth getting worked up about? Is it? No. But by you getting angry, by you being enraged, is not going to solve anything in your situation. If anything, it's only going to make it worse. When you apply patience, when you apply love, when you apply transparency and empathy, things work a lot smoother, that's for sure. <laughs> and especially when you invite God into the situation, right? <laughs> so confirm your response before saying it or doing it. And I just want to share another Quick story with you guys. Um, I have a brother of mine, and he, this is awesome, by the way, because the Lord works. He actually has a family in Peru, and he went to go see his family in Peru for only like two or three months. And then, of course, this whole pandemic hit us, and he ended up being stuck out there for like nine or ten months, which is nothing bad because he got to be with his family. Lucky him, right? <laughs> Imagine being away from your family. But he got to be with his family, and um, I was talking to him, and I was discipling him. I was, I was pouring my love upon him and praying for him. And out there is a whole different world than compared to here. And he was struggling. He was very impatient. He wanted to come back badly. And I said, hey, dude, you need to fix your eyes on Jesus. You need to put your focus on Jesus because there's a reason why you're there and it's the reason why this whole thing is going on. So he waited patiently. He put God first in every situation. And he actually got a short little window to fly back over here. He had a flight scheduled. There was, I guess, a volcano or something erupted over there. He couldn't come. So he waited patiently more. We and him prayed for patience. And then he had only a one-day window to come back. He got that one-day window to come back. The next day, the airports were closed. Wow, the way the Lord works. And he's happy to be back because now he can provide for his family. Now he can make a better living for his family. But he stayed patiently. And he didn't uh, uh, complain or be mad because he couldn't come back so soon. 
I just thought that was a, a great story to share because he needed to be patient. That was a prime example of being patient and trusting God's timing. God's timing is always perfect. Now, there's going to be five takeaways from today's message. So if you would like to write these down, um, they will help you get a better understanding, and you actually could apply these to your life, and it will help you a lot better, that's for sure. Um, so I'm going to start with one. I'll give you guys a chance to get a pen and paper out if you have one. If you don't, starting from number one, five takeaways from today's message. And this is actually from Romans chapter 12, verse 12. And I love this because it explains the whole sermon. It says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Get your hopes up. Rejoice in the, in the, in the, in the, before the Lord's coming soon. Be patient through the struggle, through these hard times. Be patient and continuously pray every day. Number two, learn from the missed opportunities to have patience in the past. Learn from the missed opportunities to have patience in the past or learn from your missed opportunities to have patience in your past. I bet there was times that you could have been patient and avoided a whole bad situation. Think about those times. Patience learned from the past. Learn it. Those, those whole times, you could learn for the future. Now you know to have patience the next time that comes around or something similar comes around. Number three, practice patience daily. Practice it. I know it's hard for us in this world today to have patience. We get very, very impatient, especially parents as well. I'm a parent. I know how it is. We, get, we tend to get impatient very quickly and all the time. But we love our children. So, But just practice it. Whether it's small or big, practice patience. I challenge everybody, starting this week, whether you're driving, whether you're going to work, whether you're speaking with a family member, practice patience. Sit back, be slow, be quick to listen, be slow to speak, be slow to anger. Practice it. Guarantee it's going to help your life and all these situations a lot better. Number four, guys, patience is holy. Patience comes from God. Patience is holy. I read a great, a great quote, and it said, Patience is the supernatural fruit of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it one more time. Patience is the supernatural fruit of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Woo, I'm thirst for that, that's for sure. Number five. Have patience with all things, but first of all, with yourself. So be patient in everything, but first be patient with yourself so you can react to these things. And guys, I said this before, and I'm going to say it again and again and again and again because I want you guys to realize and understand if we are his creation, if we are created in the same image as Christ, and he had patience and endured the suffering, endured the tribulations, and he was patiently through that, shouldn't we be patient and endure the suffering just like Jesus did? We're creating the same image. We're supposed to be like him. Learn from him. Let's pray. Bow your heads with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, God Almighty, thank you so much for your holy word. Father, thank you for helping us to receive this message and understand this message, Lord. Father, thank you for letting us preach this message and to pick this particular message out. Father, I ask you to please help us to have patience Remind us to have patience. Bless us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, so we could go through these daily struggles and these tribulations and learn how to endure these struggles. Father, thank you so much for all the amazing blessings that you put upon us. Lord, we are truly, truly rich. We just don't see it. 
Father, we're sorry if we ever ignore you or block you out. Help us to lift these veils, Father. Help us to pray to lift the veils of others, Lord, so we could put you at the center of our focus, so you could be first place in our lives, so we could know how to live, what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. So thank you, Lord, for all that you do, and all glory goes to your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen.